Hello. Welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland, and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Because do I need to explain? No, I don't think I need to explain that. Yeah, I suppose I will. It's just that when you listen to something that's intentionally made to send you to sleep through boredom it's generally a good idea to not to listen when you need to use your eyes or any other parts of your body in a purposeful way such as driving a milk float or you know if you work for the circus walking a tightrope If you're maybe a sports person, don't listen when you're playing darts. So just things like that. If you're playing golf and it's a really important tournament. And the last shot is the winning shot if you make it, if you get the ball in a hole. Because that's what golf is really, isn't it? It's getting a ball in a hole. Getting a ball in a certain amount of holes with as little amount of pushes by the club, the golf club. I think they should be indoors. It should be all surrounded, like a big, have a big ceiling or big roof. And have a flat surface, completely flat. So no wind, no hills, no sand. No alligators, none of that stuff. And that should be it. And there should be three holes. Maybe five. Maybe six. There's a bit of background sound while I'm recording this, but all oh, get this. This is exciting. 
I've, I've mentioned in previous recordings that I'm getting soundproof pads. It sounds like something I should put down my pants, isn't it? Like some kind of pad, but it's not. It's a it's a sound <laughs> soundproof, and the tiles that you put on the wall, or that I put on the wall. But I'm sure I'm not the only person that puts them on the wall. But I'm the only person that puts them on this wall. Because it's my wall. Although technically I don't own it. But. It's going to be my wall for quite a few years I hope. Because I'm never leaving here. I'm staying here forever. This is my home. Forever and ever and ever. This is, this, people say that don't they. You know. I've now moved into my forever home. Your forever home. Yeah. Now, like, how old are you? Two? Your forever home. Have you got a magical garden? <laughs> Blimey. <laughs> Do you have little fairies to turn the taps on for you to make you a magical bath? And anyway, I got these tiles. So I bought some. I'm still waiting for 150 or 120 to arrive. But so they probably come next week. Well, they must be next week because it's the next delivery day will be Monday. Because it's now 11 o'clock on Saturday. So don't, there's no deliveries tomorrow. And what I'm thinking is I kind of got this little plan. Got this little plan. And I'm going to get a little cubicle put together I've got a friend that's going to help me do it and it's going to be kind of like two doors that open up or one door that opens up and one fixed partition and the door closes when I'm inside it and it opens up when I'm not inside it or when I'm not using it so I can still sit inside and watch telly and eat cake and you know the general things that we all do. Sometimes I count the money in my pocket. But I don't take it out of my pocket. I just put my hand in my pocket. And I count the money. And that can last for hours sometimes. So I've got these uh, soundproofing. So I'm hoping. Hope, hope, hope. And let's face it. All we need in life is hope. Hope can get you so far. You're so far in life. Not hope can only get you so far, but hope hope can get you as far as you want it to go, I would say. Once you become more religious I don't mean in a religious way, just belief, hope, expectation. And I believe that I can get that little soundproof booth sorted within the next month or two. And then, 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 I can make recordings any time of the day without background sounds. Hopefully without any background sounds, but that's kind of the plan which means I won't have to wait till the middle of the night before making recordings which means I'll be able to get up early in the morning and watch daytime telly early morning television yeah I've never been so excited
once was excited about. What was it that I've. It was the last time that I was excited. I can't remember. I'm not the most excited. <laughs> it's hard to believe, I know, but I'm not the most excitable person. I don't get excited that much. I sometimes look forward to things like, oh, I think about something and I think, oh, yeah, that's happening. But I don't normally like jump up and down and You know, just that, that doesn't really happen. I don't know if it's an age thing, but I don't... I do occasionally get excited about something, but... It's probably more to do with if I ever... <sighs> a particularly enjoyable yawn. That excites me. I think uh, I have exciting things. I don't know. I just uh, I bought some shoes last week or the week before. I suppose I wouldn't use the word excited, but it felt quite satisfying to have those shoes because I haven't bought myself any kind of clothes or clothing apart from some underpants that I bought probably about a year ago maybe. But they're beginning to get a bit dirty, so I might have to get some new ones. But I need, I bought some socks as well. I do need some more socks. All my clothes are a bit, a bit, ugh, you know, they're not. I would never have really been an exciting dresser. I'm not. I don't think anyone would ever, ever describe me as being flamboyant. You know, I don't wear feathered hats or high collars or jeweled buckles on. My strap on, not, not strap on, the, that's the wrong word, my straps of the belt. You know, like the rhinestone cowboy kind of look. Although I used to have some boots years ago when I was about 17 or 16, and they were. Like boots, proper click clock boots. Like they clicked when I walked. I don't mean like click, but you, know, you could hear, you could hear it. You could hear me walking. Depending on what I was walking on. If I was walking on sand, it was a little bit quieter, but you could still hear it. If I was walking on foam, Depending on how thick the foam was. Because some foam is quite a little bit squeaky. A little bit. Like that. If I was walking in wet concrete. Then you'd probably hear more of a slurp. Like the wetness. So you could still hear it. But. 
that sound would be drowned out by the or by my next door neighbour moaning that I'd ruined his driveway. But on a normal pavement that was, you know, dry I would make a click click sound and I didn't mind because I'd never made a click click sound before it was a bit of a novelty to me and previous to that most of my shoes were you know like standard school shoes where they were fairly soft on the ground plus I didn't weigh much so I guess and I actually wear had to I was so light I had to actually wear quite big boots so I didn't float away I don't have that problem now I have to wear really 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 light boots and shoes so that I don't fall through the pavement due to the weight isn't it weird the English language how weight and weight both sound the same it can sound like an insult sometimes for example I was uh, at the dentist and I got called up from the, you know, the, the seared area. And I was called upstairs. I've been reading one of the magazines. So the dentist reception said, Mr. Newland, it's probably actually Mr. Newland, it's usually what people so don't know how to pronounce it <clears throat> excuse me I've got a bit of a icky icky not icky but throat a little bit <clears throat> been a little bit coffee and uh, as I said the problems with words is people could take it the wrong way it sounds wrong and so I went into the the dentist's room and I sat down in the chair then a dentist came out of nowhere and he was he was a really 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 large man which I don't really, didn't even notice, but he was really, really large. I mean, when he was talking to me, I didn't even realise there was a window behind him. And the window was about seven foot wide, but you know, anyway, just. did he say oh he said oh Mr Newland I said yes Mr Dentist he said uh, I said uh, he said I'm oh, sorry sorry we're a bit late we've been uh, we had an emergency dental you know operation thing that we had to do and went on a little bit longer and I said, don't, don't worry. It was a nice weight. 
And he said, what did he say? I said, it was a nice weight. He said, are you making, <laughs> are you making fun of me? I said, no, I was saying it was, I was reading a magazine and it was, <laughs> and um, I was reading a magazine, it was uh, some slimming diet magazine or something and uh, yeah, I was reading a magazine and I was just saying it was a nice weight. He said, but why, <laughs> you're making fun of my weight because I'm a little bit large. And I said, well, I'm not exactly slim myself. Well, I didn't think it was till I saw you. And he, he said, that's rude. I said, no, no, I'm not. I'm just joking. I said, no, I, I don't feel, didn't, didn't mean it at all. I was literally just saying it's a nice weight. And he thought I meant his weight. I was making fun of his size. And I wasn't at all. I just really enjoyed the the waiting experience in the waiting room. It was a wonderful, wonderful time of my life, you know. One of those things that I actually decided, you know what, I'm going to start a diary. And this is going to be my first entry, my first journal entry. I might even start a blog, call it The Waiting Room. And he said, I still think you're just making fun of me. I said, no, I'm not at all. Um then he said, oh, so, uh, how are things anyway? Are you okay? I said, well, not really. This, this is my mouth, isn't it? He said, what's wrong? He said, no, it's my mouth. He said, yeah, but what, what is it about your mouth? I said, no, there's nothing wrong about it. Well, it's not that I don't like the shape of this. It's, it's the, I've got like an ache in one of the teeth. And he said, oh. I said, yeah. He said, well, we have to do an x-ray. I said, no, you don't. He said, yes, we do. I said, no, no, you don't. I don't need an x-ray. I can tell you which tooth hurts. Because <clears throat> it's in my mouth. And he said, yeah, but we'll still give you an x-ray. And I read his mind, because I realised at that moment that I had superpowers, and I could read minds. And what he was thinking was, we must start having x-rays to everyone, giving them x-rays to everyone, because we get paid money for that from the NHS. So needless x-rays for everybody. I read his mind. And he also was saying something about the dental nurse that I can't repeat. So I was like, oh, that's a problem, isn't it? With great power comes great responsibility. Do I tell her what he's thinking? Or not? And I thought I'll, I'll let it go I'll just wait see what happens here because he's you know he's he's been a little bit rude to me today and I was doing my best to show a lot of love a lot of love and compassion because I remember my my granddad used to say treat other people how you would like to be treated But uh, and he did. He, he kept to that. He stuck to his word, and he he ended up in court about five times. His, his defence was, "Yeah, but I'd like someone to do that to me in public, like Granddad. That's not. Doesn't mean it's okay. Just because you want someone else to do it, you can't just go up and." pat someone on the head or whatever else what he was doing oh. so I'm watching boxing while I'm talking 
but it's like an old fight that I've seen before and it's muted so it's kind of weird when you take away the excitement of the the audio of it So I've just had an omelette and chips from the Chinese takeaway. It's quite a long walk to get there. And it's exactly the same journey back. I'm going to go back. I was sweating. Proper, proper sweating. I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because I was getting hot, but it wasn't hot outside. But I was all, ooh, you know? Some of these boxes, it's, it's, when you take it, the, the excitement Of you know the sound and the screaming and the shouting and the music and the atmosphere and the build up and the interviews before and all that stuff you know and you just turn it on mute and watch it without all that it's just two people punching each other. Seems a little bit, uh, a little bit violent, really. Still going to watch it. There's a world title fight on tonight well early hours of the morning here and it starts at two o'clock in the morning so just over two hours away just over two hours yeah two hours and 19 minutes and it's going to be Oh, so I'm just watching this. It's going to be the World Heavyweight Championship fight with Deontay Wilder and Dominic Brazil. So that should be interesting to watch. And I will watch it. I really will. I'm going to enjoy it as well. I'm thinking of eating some of my Maltesers whilst I watch it. Because I like Maltesers. I like the taste of them. I've always liked them. From a very early age. However, I wasn't born with Maltesos in my mouth. Malte Maltesos? Maltesers. By the way, if you don't know what Maltesers are, educate yourself. I can't do everything for you. <laughs> they might be called something different in your country. They're basically little round balls. A chocolate coated kind of honeycomb. And they're lovely. It tastes yummy. And they kind of malt. So it's not really honeycomb. 
honeycomb malt. And they're really nice. I used to suck them. I used to suck them completely dry. You know, all the chocolate. So the chocolate would just completely disintegrate and absorb into my gums and fill my blood with chocolate or my veins with chocolate. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. And I'd be left with this little ball. So I'd have a little ball in my mouth. So I'd be sucking on this little ball. And see that the the bag that the balls come in, like the chocolate balls, the ball bag, I suppose I could call it a ball bag. I don't put the ball bag in my mouth, I just put the chocolates, the individual balls in my mouth, out of the bag. Uh, because I don't eat them all at the same time. So if I emptied, I can only do four or five at a time. I can fit about five balls in my mouth, these little uh, Maltese balls. But so I don't, I don't put the the, the, the bag, the, the ball bag or the Maltese or ball bag. It doesn't go anywhere near my face. So I just because um, I like to keep it hygienic. So once something goes in my mouth, I eat it, uh, you know. But I don't like to touch stuff until I eat them. So I don't like to sort of touch chocolate and then put it back. It feels somewhat contaminated. Yeah, it's like I've contaminated it from me, out of myself. Power share, hydro shot, ready, aim, clean. I want one. I've got some twisted. Those steam cleaners look really. Ex that gets me a little bit excited. It gets my drippy tap dripping. It just. There's something. They look so good on the adverts where they use those steamers and they clean anything. They basically, if you could get one, like the biggest one in the world, you could clean the entire world. It's as if you could just, you wouldn't need to ever operate on anyone. You could just use a steam cleaner and it would just purify the entire body and everything would work out and heal. In reality, it would just scold you, which is not nice. I was thinking about getting one. I used to have a little one. But I'd like to have a bigger one. But then, even with the little one, I didn't never used it. It was more like a... Like a little hand vacuum, you know those hand vacuums that don't, I don't know if they're still about, but when they first came out, uh, they just, yeah, it just, you know, the suction wasn't very good. And, uh, Basically, unless you were trying to suck up something that was already had helium in it and is already like traveling into the air, then it could suck that up. But they weren't very good, the original ones. What were they called? Handy Vac? Vacky Vac Vac? Rucksack vac, vac in a rucksack. Rucksack and crack, I don't know. I didn't mind it, but just didn't do the proper job, you know. 
that this steam cleaner looks like it might be it might be really exciting to use that might be exciting so I'm still watching the boxing in there I wouldn't be any good at the commentary just say oh yeah uh, Golovkin's punching and now Kel Brook is punching him back and they're punching each other and Kel Brook just punched and Golovkin just punched now Golovkin's punched him again and Kel Brook just punched him back and now they're facing each other and now the referee's in the way of the camera I can't see anything oh now he's moved it's annoying when that happens. Occasionally it happens when just at the wrong time and there's like a really good punch and there's a knockout. But the referee's just standing in front of the camera with his back to the camera and he's the only one who gets to see the knockout. Apart from the thousands in the audience that are watching... I mean, nowadays they've got big screen TVs above the ring or at the sides of the ring because the audiences are so big that they can't see the fight in the ring, they can't see what's going on. I mean, from that far away, it looked look like two ants playing in the playing violins. You know, it just it would just just be too far too far away to really enjoy the full extent of brain damages that they're giving each other I always wanted to be a boxer when I was younger I actually thought I'd be quite a good boxer as long as it was in the ring and it was You know, those rules. Because the good thing about it, if it's in the ring, you've got a referee, you've got a crowd watching, and you kind of got to do what, you know, you got to do everything by the book and behave. But in a, in a reality situation, they might turn up in a tank. Have a missile launcher or something, and that's no good. I remember years ago, years and years ago, there was a Christmas party at uh, a club that I was at. It was a comedy club, and the whole night was Christmas, and people were celebrating Christmas and stuff. It was in December. I can't remember what year it was. Probably... 98 or 99, something like that. And the compare, it came off stage and he'd been picking on some people in the audience and they were talking back and he was, you know, just... Uh, saying something to them. And they kept going on. So I think the doorman might have asked one of them just to keep it down a bit. Well, anyway, it looks like the... The referee... Not the referee, I'm watching the boxer at the moment. The boxer started punching. No, again, that's different. This, this bloke from the audience followed the compare off the stage, the compact got off the stage and walked through the club into the bar area. And this audience member followed him and grabbed him. And uh, the comic pushed him over and he, he went up, fell over on his bum and he got up and then the doorman got hold of him. And this is one of the weirdest defences I've ever heard, ever. Okay. 
when he was asked, what do you think you're doing? You know, what do you think, what the hell do you think you're doing? And uh, this man, this audience member, said, I was only trying to punch him. Genuine, I heard it with my own, with my own wonderful eyes and ears. eyes and ears and fingertips but no tears as I wandered through the forest of angels and butterflies thinking to myself how did I get here I only wanted to go to the supermarket how did I get here all I wanted was cheese how did I get here? How can I get home? But I don't want to go home yet because I haven't got the cheese yet. I must have the cheese before I leave the forest of breezy trees with daffodils drinking out of cups filled with bovril the delight of delights with hippopotamuses wearing tights and land rovers driving through the water the well of infinite wisdom dripping out of the elephant's trunk feeding the alligators cheese sandwiches which reminded me of the cheese yet again needing that cheese not just wanting the cheese but needing that cheese because I like cheese but sometimes cheese isn't all that you would expect it to be because cheese can sometimes be something different from what it was cheese cheese I used to like cheese. I know people that like lots of cheese. Cheeses and cheeses. I remember once I went to a pub with my father and my stepmother and we went to this pub and we sat down in some trees. Trees everywhere, trees. But it wasn't really trees, it was a fireplace with logs that once were trees when I was younger I thought logs in the fire were the babies of trees but I was wrong so the joy of watching the flames of the fire diminished somewhat when I realised it was just trees but not babies of trees because I felt it romantic and Christmassy reminded me of cheese sandwiches wandering through the trees because cheese sandwiches in my mind have feet and legs and sometimes they even have a big smile made of sausages hopefully by now you'll be asleep so it won't matter what I say there was a JJ and he Sometimes had funny.
thoughts in his head la 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 this is possibly one of those more surreal moments when nothing really happens I just talk I talk for no reason but other than the fact that I am talking I wish I had more chocolate stuff to eat like ice cream or a Capri's cream egg or meringue like a packet of meringues like meringue nests you know oh you bite into them and they crumble and they go all over the floor but it doesn't matter because they taste so good not good enough to be eat them off the floor because I'm don't have to do that I you know, I just eat stuff that's not been on the floor because I'm not a rodent. And, oh, but meringues, they taste so nice. Yummy, 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 yummy. And they melt. And it's that mixture of meltedness and that toffee stickiness. As the toffee stickiness gets stuck in between my teeth. Oh, it's, it's a... It's just a wonderful experience to, again, I would consider writing a journal uh, entry over such a, an experience. I'm not sure what else I'd like to eat. What I quite like is ice cream and sponge mixed together. Now that's gorgeous. G -g -g gorgeous. Really, really nice. I like it a lot. I really, really do. And I'd advise it to anyone who really wants to enjoy eating ice cream with sponge. So it doesn't well, to me, it doesn't really matter what kind of ice cream it is, whether it's uh, vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream. And they're pretty much the only two that I like when it comes to mixing sponge cake into. And it could be like a sponge muffin or something like that. And a sponge muffin can be chocolate or just a plain vanilla-ish one. But you mix that together in any combination with any type of ice cream. Whether the chocolate or the, the white, you know, the, the plain muffin. And mix it and it's like the perfect combination of texture and taste and it's very exciting very very exciting experimental uh, thing because it is quite experimental it's probably something you've never thought about before and you know I'm just telling you about it and maybe you've never thought about it before and please you know don't if you do go out and patent it and turn it into some kind of a brand and make loads of money and please give me some of that money because I, I like I like the idea of having some money 
Okay, so I've got 48 pence in my bank. So it'd be really nice to have some some money and then I could go and buy some cakes and ice cream. Oh, it tastes so good. Yeah. Chocolate eclairs as well. I like chocolate eclairs. But I tell you what else I like. I really like the pastry in you know, the chocolate eclair pastry so you got the what they called um the like little real balls again like you can get a it's not so much a bag uh, a ball bag but like a box bag or a ball box you get them in a in a like a like a, a cardboard container and they're frozen but well you can buy them frozen uh, they're so nice it's basically shoe pastry I don't know why it's called shoe pastry because it doesn't taste like shoes um, but it's very yummy really I don't know I like them really really like them so much and with ice cream as well such a lovely mixture ice cream can go with so many things apart from tea ice cream and a nice hot cup of tea don't mix They're not good bathing partners. Separately, they work, but not together, I don't feel. But each to their own, really. I mean, everyone has their own particular like when it comes to certain things don't they I'm okay with a cup of tea I don't mind a cup of tea but doesn't really fit together with ice cream I remember when I first heard about iced tea and I thought, what? I thought somebody was telling me a joke. Honestly, I thought they were making it up. I said, what do you mean iced tea? And they said, yeah, iced tea. You mean cold tea? He said, no, it's iced tea. Yeah, cold tea, that's you know it's just tea that's gone cold because tea that goes cold goes cold doesn't it it doesn't just stay warm it goes cold like oh and they said no it's actually you can have ice in it that's what the iced part means. Why would you want to have ice in your tea? I mean, it'd melt, wouldn't it? My friend said, no, it wouldn't melt. I said, yes, it would. He said, why would it melt? I said, well, if you put ice into a cup of tea, the ice would melt. He said, yeah, but the tea is cold. Ah, so it is cold tea then. Yeah, it's cold tea. What does it need ice, ice for then? To make it colder. Well, that just that just seems wrong. 
Oh, well, why? Why is it wrong? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Well, why would you want to drink cold tea? It's not cold tea, it's iced tea. It's a difference. But I don't understand it. Well, have you heard of hot dogs? Yeah. Well, they're not actually hot dogs, are they? What do you mean? Well, they're not dogs, you know, like woof woof, that are really hot. Yeah, I know that. Well, actually, I didn't. I wish you'd told me that, because I could have probably enjoyed more sporting events. Because I wouldn't have been hungry if I'd known it was just a sausage and a roll. So, you know, it's about not taking things literally, maybe. I don't know what you think. But iced tea, it seems. What about iced coffee? Iced coffee, iced cappuccino. What on earth is that about? I do sometimes wonder. I whoa, 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 wonder. Why? Oh, why, 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 why? She went away. Ooh, ooh, I wonder. Oh, oh, oh. If you knew Peggy Zoo, then you'd know why I feel blue. Oh, Peggy. Ah, uh, my Peggy Sue. Oh, who? Oh, oh. Peggy Sue, Peggy Sue, Peggy, 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 Peggy Sue, a ho, Peggy, my Peggy Sue, who, 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 I really love that girl, I love you, Peggy Sue. Think it over what you just said. Think it over in your pretty little head. I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. You're going to give your love to me. Just you know why. Why you... And die. Peggy Sue got married not long ago. Oh boy. Every day things are getting faster and going faster than a roller coaster. Love like yours will surely come my way. Hey, hey. Do you remember, baby, last September when you held me tight each? And every night, baby, blah, blah, blah. Well, I guess it doesn't matter anymore. You ho, 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 Peggy Sue, Peggy Sue, pretty, 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 Peggy Sue. Oh, oh, Peggy, 
ma hai pe ki su ahu ahu hu I really love that girl I love you Peggy Sue Peggy Sue Peggy Sue Pretty 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 Peggy Sue Oh oh Peggy Oh my Peggy Sue I really love that girl I need you Peggy Sue Ding dong 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 Bing bong bow 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 still watching the boxing still on still on mute got no idea what's happening generally in life but I'm going to end this silly charade and I shall speak to you again really soon bye bye